Hi guys, in today's video, I'll be talking about TNM staging system. Uh, we'll take the example of squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity. Imagine a scenario where a patient comes to you with this ulceration on his tongue. As a doctor, if you tell him that, sir, you have cancer and you need to get these many tests done and it will cost you this much, he's going to freak out. That's not really his mistake. For most of the non-medicals, cancer equals death. But that's not exactly true, right? It's so, so important to convey to the patient about his chances of survival, morbidity and degree of spread. So to assess this, we have staging, which could be clinical and pathological. Clinical is where we check the extent of the cancer based on physical examination and imaging tests. We check for the size of the primary tumour and whether it has spread to the nearby lymph nodes and whether it has reached distant areas. The clinical stage is a key part of deciding the best treatment to use. Pathological staging, also called as surgical staging, is when you determine the stage when a surgery is being performed. It's different from clinical staging because you may find that the cancer has spread more than it was thought to. Apart from that, we may even have to remove a tumour or pieces of the tumour and look at it under the microscope. Then you must grade it. That's called as histological grading. More about this in the next video. I will elaborate on clinical staging in this video. The American Joint Committee on Cancer and International Union for Cancer Control maintain the TNM or the Tumor Node Metastasis Classification System as a tool for doctors to stage different types of cancer based on certain standards. It's updated every 6 to 8 years to include the advances in our understanding of cancer. T refers to the extent of the disease based on the size of the tumour and its local invasiveness. N refers to the presence or absence, size and extent of the regional lymph nodes. M refers to the presence or absence of distant metastasis. The TNM staging system for oral cancer was published in 2010 in the 7th edition of the manual published by the AJCC. In 2017, the 8th edition of this manual was released. The first step in the staging process is identifying the histological type of lesion of interest. In today's video, I'll speak about squamous cell carcinoma, which comprises 90% of the malignant neoplasms of the oral cavity. Let's discuss in detail how to grade a patient with oral and oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. So before you start staging the tumour at stage 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4, where 4 is the most advanced stage, you record the T, N and M values. We start off by noting the T values. Tx denotes a situation when the size of the primary tumour cannot be assessed. If you have no evidence of the primary tumour, it's T0. Tis is when the tumour has histological diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma in C2, irrespective of the size of the lesion. This T classification system is only applicable to squamous cell carcinoma. However, when a diagnosis of invasive squamous cell carcinoma has been observed, T1, T2 or T3 classifications describe the primary lesion in its greatest surface dimension. Say you have these two patients. I measure the size of these lesions. The first one is 7 cm and the second one is 2 cm. Which one do you think is more advanced? The first one obviously. Here, T brings objectivity to the size. The size of the lesion is crudely measured in centimeters with a ruler. The greatest dimension of the lesion is recorded and only clearly visible boundaries are used. Numbers after the T will describe the size of the tumour. If the tumour is less than 2 cm or 2 cm in its greatest dimension, you note it as T1. If it is between 2 cm and 4 cm, it goes as T2. If it is more than 4 cm, it goes as T3. The 8th edition of the AJCC staging system incorporates depth of invasion. Depth of invasion is defined by the pathologist as the measurement from the basement membrane relative to an area of intact squamous mucosa. Let's now go to the T4 category. So for the T4 category, you have T4A and T4B. T4A is the moderately advanced local disease, while T4B is the very advanced local disease. 
T4A and the T4B categories do not consider the surface dimensions of the lesion or the DOI. T4A is applicable to the lesions of the oral cavity, lip, chin or nose tumor which invades the cortical bone or the ones which involve the inferior alveolar nerve or the floor of the mouth, the facial skin, the bones of the maxilla and the mandible etc. The T4B is an advanced local disease in which the tumor invades the masticatory space, the pterygoid plates or the skull base. It may or may not encase the internal carotid artery. That's all when it comes to T in TNN. Once your T is ready, you note the N in which you have to check if the tumor has invaded the nearby lymph nodes. The lymph nodes of the neck serve as the first site of metastasis for squamous cell carcinoma. If the regional lymph nodes cannot be assessed, it goes as NX. If you do the palpation but do not find any lymph nodes that are hard, swollen or fixed, it goes as N0. Now what's important to note here is the size of the lymph nodes and whether it has invaded the lymph nodes which are present on the same side as the tumour, meaning ipsilateral or on the opposite side that's contralateral. If there is a single ipsilateral lymph node swelling that's smaller than 3 cm, it's N1. As the tumour grows, the nodes usually get fused. So if the tumour is greater than 3 cm but less than 6 cm, it's N2. Now depending on whether the tumour is ipsilateral or contralateral, we classify it as A, B and C. If you see metastasis in a single ipsilateral lymph node between 3 cm and 6 cm, it's N2A. But if you see multiple ipsilateral lymph nodes, again between 3 and 6 cm, it goes as N2B. If it's contralateral in the same range, it goes as N2C. So thumb rule being more than 3 but less than 6 goes as N2. Your A, B and C category is defined whether by checking if the lymph node is on the same side as the tumour or on the opposite side, that is IPC or contralateral. N3 meaning the tumour has metastasized to the lymph nodes and it's even greater than 6 cm. It is associated with a hard feeling and fixed to the underlying structures making it suspicious for metastasis. What next guys? Apart from this, what you could actually investigate is via X-rays, endoscopy and CT scans. We can actually check if the tumour has metastasized to the distant organs like your kidney, chest or lung. If no such investigation was made, it's MX. If distant metastasis is absent, it goes as M0 and if it's present, it goes as M1. After having all the T, N and M findings, we must stage this tumour. Stage 0 is when you have DIS that is carcinoma in C2 with N0 that is no lymph nodal metastasis and M0 that is no distant metastasis. Stage 1 meaning that the size of the tumour is less than or equal to 2 cm that is T1 with no kind of metastasis that is N0 and M0. Similarly, T2, N0 and M0 is stage 2. Like always, T3, N0 and M0 will come for stage 3. Apart from that, unlike stage 1 and 2 where there was no lymph node metastasis, stage 3 covers metastasis to lymph nodes that come under the N1 category which is when there is metastasis to a single ipsilateral lymph node 3 cm or less than 3 cm in diameter. This means that T1, N1 and M0, T2, N1, M0 and T3, N1, M0. All of these come under stage 3. Let's now go to stage 4. So if it's T4, N0 and M0, yeah right, it's stage 4. Apart from that, if the lymph nodes have been invaded and fused, that's basically the N2 or the N3 category, you put it as stage 4. Now for obvious reasons, tumour having distant metastasis or what we call as M1 would go as stage 4. All of these permutations and combinations come under stage 4. So basically, if any of the reds are present in your findings, it's stage 4. 